Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 144 we'll take a look at an, yet another problem solving technique called redirection. Now you can find a listing of all of the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday on my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons or just simply click on the lessons link in the menu. While a lot of the material I do in Software Architecture Monday does come from these two books I recently wrote with my friend Neil Ford, this one actually comes from a prior lesson. In the last lesson, Lesson 143, I talked about a problem-solving checklist, a checklist that Professor Polya from Stanford University introduced that allows us to go through a checklist to figure out how to solve a problem. Now, I kind of posted that lesson and I got some great feedback from a lot of people that said that was a great lesson, super useful, loved it. And so consequently, I thought, well, maybe I'll do one more problem solving one since it kind of seemed like a good diversion from the normal technical kind of architecture stuff that I do. So I want to talk about actually using redirection. How many times have you been in this kind of situation where you're pounding your head against the keyboard trying to figure out why something doesn't work in your code? Or maybe you've got a really hard problem and you're not even sure where to start and you're trying to solve that problem. Well, the answer, of course, is all too often this occurs. And as a matter of fact, in this mold or, or, of, of problem solving, sometimes often the best way to solve a problem is simply to walk away. And I want to show you some examples of this technique. Well, the first example is from Charles Darwin. And, from the origin of species. And, and, and here's Charles Darwin's quote. I can remember the very spot in the road whilst in my carriage when to my joy the solution occurred to me. Did you notice? He wasn't sitting there pondering, focusing on the problem. He was out doing something else. And that redirection, just being in his carriage, allowed him to suddenly solve part of this problem. Oh, another good example is the nuclear chain reactions. So the Hungarian-American physicist Leo Zillard came up with the concept of nuclear chain reactions. Get this, are you ready? While waiting for the red light to change outside London's British Museum. He'd been working on that for so long. But being away from the problem, driving, just waiting for that light to change, allowed him to suddenly say, I think I got it. You know, another example is from Harold Black. Now, Harold Black was an American electrical engineer, and he came up with the idea of a negative feedback amplifier, and again, ready? While taking a ferry ride to work across the Hudson River in New York City. There are so many examples of how people solved problems, really hard problems, by just walking away from it, by doing something else. And as a matter of fact, now we get to this weird picture. So what techniques can you do to leverage this powerful problem-solving technique? There's so many of these. Now, you might be curious about the cat in the shower because that is actually one of my techniques that works really well. If I'm faced with a problem I just can't figure out or can't solve or trying to start a really hard problem that I need to find a solution for. Many times I'll take a shower. When I get up, unless I'm of course teaching, uh, I'm working from home, a lot of times I won't take a shower. I'll wait until sometime in the day when I need that redirection because for me that technique really works well. Give, give, give it a try. As a matter of fact, the most common one is just getting up, walking downstairs or somewhere and grabbing a cup of coffee or tea. You know, brewing your own coffee or the time it takes to make some tea allows you to remove yourself from that problem, redirecting your energies. You know, a lot of times one good solution is simply to get up and go take a walk outside. 
whether it even just be a couple of times around the building or your house or maybe down the, the street or something, it, it, it really helps just redirect your energies. Now, one of the interesting techniques, of course, don't let anybody see you do this, is what's called talking to the duck. And this is taking a yellow rubber ducky and just having it on your computer or on your workstation. And if you're faced with a super hard problem or can't figure something out in your code, just turn over and look at the duck and start talking to it. Explain your problem. And it's amazing how many times by explaining the problem, all of a sudden the solution comes to you. It's like, oh, <laughs> Thanks, little rubber ducky. Now I have the solution. <laughs> you know, even as something as simple as just doing some house chores, uh, cleaning something up. Now, these are all great examples and techniques and try some of these out. Different ones work for different people. But I will tell you, it's harder than it looks. Getting up off of your computer and doing any of these things is really hard because we get so focused in our work. And that's the problem with problem solving when we apply too much logic. You see, all of our logical thought is contained within the prefrontal cortex of our brain, small area at the front of the brain. All the other area here is not even being used. That's where all the creativity is. And by defocusing and redirecting our energy towards solving a problem, it reduces the activity here and increases the activity here where there's much more of our brain to be able to help solve the problem. As a matter of fact, this is science and it does work. I like to think of it as this, logic, is creativity's kryptonite. In other words, the more logic we apply to try to solve a problem, the less likely it is that we will solve that problem. So give some of these techniques a try when you're stuck or stumped or just not seeing things in your code, something's not right. Just walk away, allow that creative brain to engage, to help you solve your problem. So this has been Lesson 144, using redirection to solve problems. Um, again, I just kind of loved doing these back-to-back problem-solving things, but in two weeks, um, stay tuned for the next lesson where we'll dive back into some sort of architecture kind of related topic. Well, as a matter of fact, I guess I would say these are architecturally related because as architects, we're also problem solvers. So thanks for listening. We'll see you in two more weeks.